Oh, it is a beautiful day to soak in the rays. What's happening, my friend? Welcome back to Road Reality, where it is currently 95 degrees Fahrenheit. And yep, we're recording with both cameras today. Hell yeah, I got the Hero 12, the Hero 10. This is not a product review, but I want to talk about product reviews in this video. Hey, let's go. Ha ha! It is now the world's slowest drag race between two cars that don't want to go anywhere and one Harley rider who might be a little bit impatient. How's your day going out there in YouTube land? Are you having a good day? I certainly hope it's as good as mine. I got out on twos. And as good as John Bon Jovi is, I'm gonna pause that song to thank today's sponsor, coffee. Oh yeah, I had some coffee, now I'm feeling energized. This bus is hustling down the road. We are just enjoying a nice relaxing tree line cruise. I was cooking there for a hot minute, literally a hot minute, several hot minutes in fact. But the reason I bring up cameras is because I watch a lot of camera reviews, duh. That uh, I should not come as a surprise to anybody that's watched the channel for any length of time. I've also bought a lot of cameras. I've reviewed a fair number of cameras now, a half dozen or so, I think. But I do watch a lot of camera reviews and there's something I've noticed that prevents me from beating Peter McKinnon at his own game. There's several somethings and I've brought a few of them up in past videos, but we're gonna kind of boil it down today. Gonna kind of boil it down. Oh, words are gonna fail me and my mouth is moving faster than my brain can. Here we go, or vice versa. Anyway, I was watching a Peter McKinnon video recently and David Manning does this too. And I'm not a review channel, right? I'm a vlog channel, so I just kind of do what I want and do it however I want. And the results are what they are. But those two guys, they will review a product by showing them doing something completely different with the product. So in the case of David Manning, he will take a new camera and take it on vacation with his family. And he's like, this is the only camera I brought on my vacation and this is how well it worked. And he shows you plenty of evidence of said usage. Same thing with Peter McKinnon. Peter recently got the, and I'm calling him Peter, like we're on first name basis, right? Just a jackass little Harley moto vlogger channel. But I digress. Peter got the Insta360 X4 and he did a great review of it, showed a lot of the features off of it and all the horizon stabling and 360 stabling and stabilizing and all the other stuff. Now, I have some nits to pick, which we're gonna get to in a minute, but I thought it was very neat that he used the X4 in a video that he produced with Red Bull. I think Red Bull paid him to show up and film stuff. Officer, I'm just trying to get a lay of the land here, make sure there's nobody coming and then I can go. Ooh, gravel. But anyway, Peter went to wherever it was along the eclipse pattern for the recent solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, whatever you call it, eclipse, eclipse. Yes, Bruce Almighty reference once again, as I am tongue-tied. Let us lubricate the vocal cords once again. Ah, coffee, 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 coffee. Awesome. Now everything is up to speed. I'm up to speed, let's go. So he did the Eclipse video with Red Bull and he used the Insta X4 to do it. And he, that way he was able to show off a lot of the features of the camera. So here he is doing a review for the X4 using basically a ton of the footage he recorded during the Red Bull video. So he got two for the price of one. And the nitpicks I have for that are that he did not show a lot of the things I would have expected to see like true low light, he showed the HDR and all that, but he really cherry picked his scenes, in my opinion. What's up, biker dude? So I think he kind of left us wanting for more there and having to experience it for ourselves to really see what the X4 is all about. The other thing he did was minimize its weaknesses. And namely, I heard through the grapevine, and somebody can correct me if they want in the comments below, beep, 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 that the X4 uses the same sensor as the X3 but with more AI in the software or the camera to upscale it to 8K. So you're not actually getting more data, but it's pretending, which I'm not a fan of. I really, I poo-poo that kind of stuff all day long. 
but I get why they did it. You know, corporate profit and all that crap and a new model, yada, yada, whatever. But I think Peter didn't mention that in his video. If he did, I missed it. But he also minimized the weaknesses of the camera, whereas somebody like me goes along and points out all the flaws with every camera he buys. That is me. That is my modus operandi. Said it weird? Rolling forward. I like to do that sort of thing. And then I find the workarounds and I share those with you too, so you have that to look forward to. So if you miss a road reality video and I'm getting lightheaded because I'm speaking too quickly. I left that pause in on purpose to show you that I am breathing. I am not a robot. Hi, honey. No, I'm going off the back roads recording a video. What's up? All right, I love you. I'll see you later. Bye. When the wife calls, the wife calls mid-sentence. Now I have to remember where the heck it was I was. Ah, I love you, dear. <laughs> ah, there's debris everywhere. Debris, as the Brits would say. Let's see, I was talking about Peter McKinnon and he gets a two for one. And then I do my, oops, I still have my hazards on. And then I do my reviews and I point out all the flaws. And then they lied about it and all that stuff. So I think Insta's in the wrong. Um, just run what you brung. Be happy about what you do have. Don't fake it. I really don't like the fake b that comes out of these camera manufacturers. Anyway, that's my personal belief about it. But there's more to this story. So I... <laughs> I've done enough product reviews, and recently I did the Freedom Windshields review, and I'm gonna do a concert hall review here shortly. So we're gonna put it in neutral. Nice. I give that concert hall a three out of five. It really needs to be longer. <laughs> uh, anyway. When I did the Freedom Shields review, um, I actually filmed that over four separate days, two or three weeks apart, really. It was like one day I did the install, and then another day I did the test ride, and another, another day I did more testing, and then I got caught in the rain when I brought this bike home from the 30K service, and I thought that would fit. So I went back and I added another hour to my editing, and I added the footage in from riding home after the 30K service in the rain to tell you how it does in the rain. You know, I thought that was useful information that viewers should have, so I put it in the video. I know it made for so sort of a long video, but I'm sort of a long-winded kind of guy, and that's how I roll. You know, I just kind of tell the story, and the video is however long the video has to be. No shorter, no longer, and I try to cut some of the fluff, but not all of it, because you guys give me feedback on the fluff that you kind of like some of it. So there we go. There as you have it. Bob's your uncle, bike goes down the road, I get a product review. Now, one of the other funny things is that now that I have 620 some videos edited and published and all that other stuff, I have a backlog of stuff to pull from. So when I do a talking head, I have lots of B-roll that I can add into a video to make it more engaging and exciting to watch rather than just me sitting at my desk, which is a wonderful thing and it's, Again, going back to that two for one special deal where I got rides and at one point, by the way, the Freedom Shields thing, I had four cameras and three videos mixed up and it took me a while to separate. So if you appreciate the level of editing and thought I put into my videos, please boop the like button. Now that we're what, nine minutes into the video? <laughs> oh goodness, it's down to 91. Oh, I'm so chilly now. Heat is a state of mind. Cold is a state of mind. That's what I tell my kids. They're like, I'm cold. And I'm like, cold is a state of mind. It's only temporary, bud. But going back to the whole product review thing, I do like to show the good and the bad about everything because nothing's perfect. I mean, this windshield might actually be perfect if they were sitting on the shelf ready to go and you ordered it and got it the next day. That's literally the only downside. And I've been riding with this thing for weeks now. It is the end of April, so I'm sort of shocked we're in the 90 degrees already and sunny. Ah, thank goodness I remembered to clean my visor. What's this guy doing? Is he riding on one wheel? Hey, I don't know what the heck that was. Some sort of moped, very tall for what it was. But I haven't found a downside on the windshield. If I do, I will let you know. That is my promise to you, dear viewer. 
But product reviews are kind of funny because if they send it to you for free, you don't really want to poo-poo it, but you kind of have to be honest, right? Otherwise, people won't believe you. Not kind of, you definitely have to be honest, or viewers won't believe you. But at the same time, you want the company to send you more of their products, and that's the kind of a balancing act you have to run, which is why I don't let any company take control over my editing process or what I say, and it is what it is. If a company sends me a crappy product, I'm gonna point out all the flaws. I really will. But hopefully they understand those, they take them as feedback from somebody who knows what they're doing, i.e. me, and they incorporate that into the next version of said product. If I don't happen to get something from them again in the future, oh well. And therein also lies another rub with product reviews. Somebody like Peter McKinnon has all the time in the world, right? He got hired, I think, to go fly out to wherever Red Bull was. And I'm looking for traffic. There's not much today. And he gets paid to like fly around and film stuff. So he's already there. Again, the two for one, right? And since he has all of that paid travel and everything, he can do this and take days to film. Whereas most of us moto vloggers actually cannot do that. We're already out on a ride and we're doing our motorcycle thing and there's something we wanna tell the viewers about. So we do what we can with what we have. And then some of us try to put B-roll in it later, like something we filmed at a stop and we'll talk over it. And that's another big point is the bigs will use a lot of voiceover. They got the studio mics and they've got the studio cameras and they record the talking head bits and then they put the B-roll over it. And I think that in some instances that provides a good viewer experience, but in others, maybe you want some of the engine noise. You wanna hear the revs. Oh, red light. Roxanne, stop putting out the red light. I told you you didn't have to. <laughs> Skip. So I know I'm kind of all over the place, but my product reviews and a lot of motorcycle product reviews are going to involve the install portion of the process as well, because it just makes sense to teach somebody how to install the part that you're reviewing and then review it, right? Isn't that kind of like what it should be? So you end up with longer videos. And therein, it, well, I was going to say therein lies another rub, but that's uh, old hat now. Anyway, the bigs, they like to do things in like six to eight minutes, maybe 10 or 12 tops. I just can't do it. I'm too long winded. But they're able to mix in all sorts of other stuff and they sort of gloss over steps and they gloss over things. And that makes their videos shorter and thus easily digestible by the average viewer, which is one reason I think that they get more views than somebody like me, who is admittedly reviewing niche products, niche products, if you will. So the market for these things is a lot smaller on motorcycle channels than it would be for say a Peter McKinnon with a camera review. Plus his cinematography just can't be beat. I mean, the guy's got 6 million subscribers for a reason. Yeah. Then's the brakes. I still have fun doing this, so I still do it. Oh, you're, you're gonna come fine, pass me. I'm already doing the speed limit, fuckaroo. Hey, there we go, another biker. What's up, buddy? Yeah, nice. Love seeing the bikes out. It is springtime, even if it feels like summertime. But I have rambled on long enough. What are your thoughts on this? Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of product reviews, mine specifically, but also other ones you've seen. Maybe I can learn something. And don't forget the two mantras. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. Maybe it's watching the video on screen now, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Gosh darn red light.